Welcome to another episode of Talk Story with John Waihe'e. And as usual, we have a guest for you this afternoon that should really hold your interest for more time than I have on this show. I have with me a good friend, Gary Kubota, award-winning journalist, playwright, and I think, I think, my personal opinion, most important community <laughs> Welcome, Gary. Thanks, John. It's good, good to, to have you. you. You know, I could spend the whole half an hour just talking about your life, which is uh, extremely interesting, you know. Um, okay, let's start off with being a, a journalist. You worked for years with the uh, Honolulu Advertiser. And Star Bulletin and, and Star the Maui Away, News. All of them. That's yeah, what. I worked at United Press International when there was a wire service in Honolulu. Uh, Pacific Boy, Daily News on Guam. Well, yeah, those are the good old days when yeah. we actually had uh, newspapers in this town. Yes. And, and along the way, you got to cover a lot of interesting stories. That's I did. I remember Walter Ritty and um, Emmett Aluli standing in front of the Iolani Palace on a, a press conference, and I was the only journalist there interviewing them because <laughs> I felt it was important to have a minority voice expressed and for people to listen to. Well, you know, I, yeah. I got to ask you this question, though, because as a technical thing. I mean, I hope you tape that interview. You might, you, you might have something really historic. Well, you know, the historic part about it was I was so disorganized because I was really new to the thing that uh, I pulled out a pen and I didn't have paper, so I had to write the notes on a brown paper bag. Oh, you got to keep the bag. I hope you kept the <laughs> no, bag. No, no bag. But you, so also, I got the story. <laughs> you know, you also had a way with dealing with people like Walter and Emmett and others because you yourself were was very active in uh, community issues in uh, yes. Honolulu and the state of Hawaii. Before I became a journalist, I had been a, an activist with Kukua Hawaii, and we organized a number of uh, eviction struggles, despite evictions, and and uh, worked to save ethnic studies. So, so this is Kukua Hawaii. Kukua, Kukua Hawaii. Kukua Hawaii yeah. As I, as I remember it, was probably the very first organized activist group uh, in uh, contemporary Hawaii. And that would yes. be sometime about 1970 or 69. 1970, 1971, uh, we were very active. Um, and what was the first, what was the first uh, issue that you were involved with? I think it was, it was Kalama Valley. Kalama yeah. Valley is now, uh, that's out by Sandy Beach, Hawaii Kai area, right? right? And, and it was basically to help the farmers and uh, Native Hawaiians who live there um, try and stop the eviction, or at least give them a voice in terms of uh, what was happening around them. This was when, I think it was the Bishop Estate. Yes. Bishop Estate had decided to build houses out there in Kalama Valley. In which was at that time, people might not, some of the young people listening today might not realize that that whole area was actually farmland at one time. So these people were farmers. They, they were actually making their living and they were getting evicted. And there, a lot of them, for a lot of them, it was the last place. I mean, they, they, there really was no other place they could go after that. It was the end of the farmland, era, you know, in, in East uh, Honolulu. So that's why they made their stand. Well, I think my wife had some relatives that got shoved uh, off of that area and sent to uh, Waianae. Yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 and so the Kalama Valley started, it was a good cross-section of people, but you, the Kuku Hawaii didn't let it go then. I mean, they took no. one step beyond that. What happened is people began calling Kuku Hawaii up, uh, and like, uh, especially uh, Larry Kamakaviva Ole and Suli Niheo. They, they asked for help. And they were, you say ask for help, they were asking for help to do Organize what? and resist. Organize and resist. Well, that's great words. Resist. I mean, that's, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Organize and resist. Right. Um, you know, I, show picture number one. We got a great picture of um, the organizing and resisting. <laughs> This is, uh, but at this time, Kuku Hawaii was we one were, of the active groups pushing for ethnic studies. That's right, and we had already begun, we, at that time in ethnic studies, to preserve it in 1972, we were already in about eight different communities in Hawaii that were organizing and resisting evictions. So when we called upon the residents to come and help to support the students in ethnic studies in order to 
so that their minority voices could be continued to be heard, they came. Can you imagine the University of Hawaii without ethnic studies, without Hawaiian studies, without any of the special um, studies that we now have? And you, Hukua Hawaii, actually kicked it all off. Yeah, I would think, right? It, I mean, we never knew what was going to happen, you know, but we just felt that, that something needed to be done. Because I remember the call, you know, our history, our way. That's right. Our history, that's... our way, you know. Larry uh, Kamaka Vivioli was a giant of a person. He I mean, was. Uh, he was. You know, he was an incredible um, founder, really, of ethnic studies. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. he just passed away. But uh, we have a picture of him, I think. Um, what's the next picture we got in our set of pictures? Uh, person in my. Okay. So this is, you wrote a book, by the way. Right. And it's a, it's a collection of interviews, and it includes Larry Kamaka Vivioli. Uh, a lot of different people who were involved in activism and research. And that picture on the left is a, of a demonstration that we had at the state capitol that involved thousands of people, including uh, Save Our Surf. Yeah, you, you kind of, you were the umbrella organization. And this was, this, you got to remember, this was even before things like the Hawaiians and others had, uh, right. ethnic groups had specifically got it started. So the, and, and what was really lovely about it, and you wrote this book, and this book's pretty much all about Kukua Hawaii, right? Kukua Hawaii and the activism that happened. Basically, if you read it, it's almost like a primer for how to, how to organize. <laughs> yeah, it, but it was great because this was a young people's movement, essentially. It and it was a young people's movement, and they were basically telling the Hawaii political establishment, wake up. Things are not going as be well as, as you uh, see. Because mm -hmm. this, this is all happening like a decade after, roughly, a little more than a decade after statehood. Right. And, and um, we got another picture for you coming on up. And this is Larry. I, this was Larry at his prime. This is the professor. This is the guy who started uh, ethnic studies or became the symbol of it. I mean, people yeah, He like was the yourself. first director of ethnic studies. He um, was a mentor of mine. I mean, he, was, he, he taught me a lot. And a lot of times when, when I'm out there, I still think about him and what Larry would think or say. Well, that's fantastic. Um, we got this just to show. We got another one of these photographs, which you should see. Okay, this is a great picture. <laughs> it's a Chinatown uh, eviction struggle. And there's Pete Thompson and Sully Nihil and... Um, yeah, Kalani this is Hello. a fantastic picture. Yeah. Can you imagine this? This, the gentleman, I think, I don't know how to describe him, but he's like the second person. He's looking right at us. He's the first person looking at us. With, uh, and, uh, you know, he's, he ended up being a stockbroker. <laughs> one of the he best. Was, he was one of the best. He was a Hawaii. brilliant researcher. And a brilliant, brilliant researcher. Brilliant he debater. A, he was an economist, you know. All he, he had to do is make that five degree turn, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, so you have been writing about um, the movement. And, and, but, right. you know, before we go into all of that, I, I, I got to I gotta tell the, the folks at home this, though. You have not stopped being an activist. So when you, uh, I, I know that you, you retired uh, from, the, uh, from the newspaper work, but you were also very recently involved in some community action yeah. at the... Uh, yeah, the, what happened is that on my home island of Maui, there are these uh, 250 Front Street apartment tenants who uh, would be evicted by this time, as we speak. Had it not been for uh, two years ago, um, them organizing, reorganizing, and uh, me helping them try to guide them into how to get a bill passed that would keep that land and the buildings for affordable housing for the tenants there. And it took a bit of a struggle, but because of my experience as a community organizer um, in Oda Camp, uh, that was a Filipino oh, community. There's another one. Of yeah, those. And there we, we, you know, we won there too. Right. Um, yeah, when I say we, there are a lot of other people. Well, there's not a just lot me. of people, and, yeah. but the, again, the roots are all here, right? Right. I mean, all in the books. But okay, so you took, you took all of that and you uh, organized in Maui. Now, what happened? I mean, we're, well, we, the, 
Uh, the governor signed uh, a bill this year to um, purchase, that enables the purchase of the land, and they're in the process of purchasing the buildings now. Really? Yeah. So the state of Hawaii is going to take over that area, or, or yes, the people? it's going to keep it in there, uh, in, in uh, as state housing um, for uh, poor and um, people who, did, I mean, there was a Vietnam, vet, not vet, a Gulf War veteran fighting cancer who was one of the tenants there. there. There was a woman who had to have dialysis every other day. Uh, a grand, great-grandmother who was taking care of her great-grandchild. Um, what that well, speaks volumes. Well, you know what, what's yeah. inspiring about that is that the people that you knew way back when at Kalama Valley probably would have been there helping you in Maui. Uh, had they been there, you know, and they actually some of them helped me out when it came to being there. Like at the state capitol, I called on Larry Kamakaviva Ole, really, K Kapali, Bob Nakata. Oh, wow. they they were sitting in the same room at one of these committee hearings, legislative committee hearings, and some of them were holding signs. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic! That's so and fantastic. Why Hole Why Kani, the royal sub. At Royals and um, um, Oda Camp representative of the president, they were there too. Wow. So we brought back a lot of the coalition people to help these people. And it, it, it was really gratifying because um, they wanted to help because they knew what these people were going through. You know, because, okay, I, I, as you're saying this, you know, Bob Nakata, for example, I mean, <laughs> why Holy White Connie? The, the whole, in a way, in a way, uh, he was one of the, I would say, the founding fathers of the, um, of the Water Commission that we now have in the state right. of Hawaii. Because right. the, the, these, these movements grew and really changed Hawaii entirely. Bob was, uh, uh, for Waiholo Aikane, he, he, he represented a lot of the farmers who were there who had interest in, they respected him because he, he was pretty educated. I mean, he had a master's in some kind of physics and things well, like that. And, and plus he was a reverend, so you know yeah. the reverend would be looking out for you. You know, uh, okay. That was your latest uh, uh, foray into, uh, into activism. But you also did, you also became a playwright. Yes, and you, you wrote mm -hmm. uh, a very important play, which we are going to uh, we're going to take a break very shortly, mm -hmm. and I want to come back and talk about that play because it has its roots, really, folks, in all of the things we have just discussed, including Pukua Hawaii. I, I, uh, it, uh, not the, I mean, the idea of writing the play has its roots there, but. Um, this story, which you wrote about, actually may have been the ancestor of all the things that you did. And, and so, and the name of the play is? Legend of Ko'olau. A Legend of Ko'olau. So folks, be with, um, we are going to be back um, very short. Well, no, uh, I, I think we got about another minute, so I don't have mm -hmm. to leave. The Legend of Ko'olau. And this, this uh, when does it take place? It's uh, taking place this Saturday and Sunday at the Doris Duke Theater at the Honolulu Museum of Art. Um, and um, let me see, it's uh, 7 p.m. on Saturday and 3 p.m. on Sunday. Okay, so mm -hmm. you, this coming weekend, the play will be shown. Yes. We will be right back in... Uh, and to get into the, uh, the story itself with the person, the playwright, Gary Kubota. So. Hi guys, I'm your host Lillian Kumik from Lillian's Vegan World. I'm, I come to you live every second Friday from 3 p.m. And this is the show where I talk about the plant-based lifestyle and veganism. So we go through recipes, some upcoming events, uh, information about health, regarding your health, and uh, just some ideas on how you can have a better lifestyle, eat healthier, and have fun at the same time. So do join me. I look forward to seeing you, and uh, aloha. Aloha. 
My name is Wendy Lowe, and I want you to join me as we take our health back. On my show, all we do is talk about things in everyday life, in Hawaii or abroad. I have guests on board that will just talk about different aspects of health in every, in every way, whether it's medical health, nutritional health, diabetic health, you name it, we'll talk about it. Even financial health, we'll even have some of the Miss Hawaii's on board and all the different topics that I feel will make your health and your lifestyle a lot better. So come join me. I welcome you to take your health back. Mahalo. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e and my very special guest this afternoon, Gary Kubota. Outstanding Thank you. journalist, community activist, and playwright. So, Gary, your play, The Legend of Ko'olau, will be playing this week and at the uh, Doris Duke Theater. Um, and we got up there for our people to see. That's Morin Ikanikoa. He's the actor. He acted in, uh, he was a, one of the stars of Kuliana. Okay, okay. And uh, he's been touring, and so Anthony Sepulveda is the first quote. Anthony saw Moore and I acting in Los Angeles and uh, sent me an email. Saying, this is the guy for your play. Well, this is the guy. No, he saw the play and he said, ah, okay. This is the guy. Let's have more of it. <laughs> okay, I got it. Now, okay, uh, for our people out there, the legend of Ko'olau is really. Uh, it's it's obviously a it, you wrote a play around it, but it's based on real events. And it's a historically real it's historically based. I think uh, the reason I use legend is because Kolo never was quoted in the newspapers or anything. But he let his actions basically speak for himself. Um, it's but it, the story is about love and survival. Well, tell us about yeah. tell us the story. Okay. I mean, his really. love of his wife and his son. During a time when there was the overthrow of the Hawaiian monarchy, there was a lot of turmoil going on. And, his, and their survival uh, as a family against the new government that wanted to step up and enforce leprosy laws. Because, because Ko'olau and his son had contracted leprosy. So this is a story. This, so this takes place uh, roughly around 1893. So this is right after the right overthrow. Right after the overthrow. And the Republic of Hawaii, or the insurrectionists, yeah. which, by the way, as an editorial remark, which I get to do from time to time as the host of this program, was probably the most oppressive government in the history of Hawaii. Oh, my God. And so, <laughs> you know, uh, and I know that there are people running around today who think the state's pretty bad, but uh, i got to <laughs> tell you, the, Re the Republic of Hawaii was really bad. Yeah. See, I think we need that background because I, I don't think people know, for example, that during the Republic of Hawaii, uh, unlike the kingdom, I'm going to contrast right. the two so we can get, uh, you know, this story into the right place. Um, during the Republic, no Asians could vote in, in the Republic. Exactly. So, whereas under the kingdom, there were Asian subjects who would participate, right. elect members of the legislature. And we're talking, it's a lot and of Hawaiians, Chinese people. Hawaiians had to be Hawaiians of property. They, in not, yeah, and not only would they, they have to be... Uh, uh, people of property also had to have a lot of it. Yeah. You know, the yeah. point is that uh, at one time with Kamehameha III, they didn't need, they didn't have the property requirement. Correct. The other interesting thing, which I don't think people know about, is that if you spoke a Western language, didn't matter whether you considered yourself a subject or not, or a citizen of Hawaii, if you spoke any Western language, which means anything from Europe, you got to vote. You didn't need a. Uh, you didn't need a, a requirement. So uh, you don't need property requirement. You didn't need anything. You just need to be able Mars, to speak yeah. English or French yeah, or right. Spanish. So this is the government that your main character has to deal with. And, and, and go ahead. And so, so one of the things it's it's a kind of a reckoning. Uh, you know, of facts that that I I researched. Um, at one point, I, when you talk about um, cruelty and just plain meanness, 
when the when the new government and the military weren't able to capture Kuala, and Kuala was getting the better of that. So what they were doing was they were trying to send him to uh, Kalapapa. Yes. So he he had contracted leprosy. He and his son. And they went to Kalalau Valley in North Kauai. Now, yeah. the Kalapapa was happening before right. uh, all of this. I mean, it, it, uh, it's one of the sad, sad chapters in, in our history. But as I understand it, starting at the time with Kalakaua, the, the monarchy was backing off of sending people to Kalapapa. They, yeah. they didn't think it was a good idea. In fact, yeah. I think Kalakaua uh, originally had a plan to build uh, settle, uh, settlements or something like hospitals on every island. Mm -hmm. But when the Republic came in, right. they started to enforce the laws. They stepped of it up. And the, right. And, and that they wouldn't even let um, Kukuas go to the island. In and other the words, Kukuas relatives. Kukuas are people who would be there to help. Right. Who, who, did, who weren't sick, but they were relatives a lot of times. Like, Ilani wanted to go. But she couldn't go because they wouldn't let her go. So Pilani Pilani was Kolau's husband. Yeah. Oh, oh, I mean, yeah. Kolau's wife. Right? All right. So this is a great story. i, I, I got to set it up for the people. Okay. So you have Kolau. He's a whole native Hawaiian living on Kauai. And, uh, and I'm assuming, given the time and the personage, that somebody that was probably at home in nature and, and living he was off a, the land. Yeah. And he all was that. a foreman for two ranches, like oh. that. He was like the Hawaiian foreman for the two ranches. So he was a cowboy. Major. He was a cowboy. A paniolo. Yeah. And oh. he, was, he also was a crack shot. I mean, he even named his rifle after. And when somebody <laughs> names their rifle, you know, <laughs> you really don't want to mess with them. <laughs> okay, so he gets, he has leprosy. Uh -huh. They want to, the, the government now decides to bring back this very archaic system. And my own sense of reading of this whole background history, right. because this story, by the way, your play is so fascinating, that uh, it is because they didn't want to spend money on doing the little hospital type of settlements right. that Kalakaua wanted. So they were starting to shove people back to Kalapapa. They told him, I'm sorry, you got to go. He says, okay, I'll go initially, but can I bring my wife? And they tell him, no way, you and your boy. And tell us the story. What yeah. happened? Well, basically, they went into Kalalau Valley. Uh, be, where, there was a small leper colony there already. One of the guys who was there was a judge. Really? And judge Kawai. I think that was his name. Yeah. And, and so, and he basically said to them, if you come into the valley, you try and get me, I'm going to defend myself. And, and that's what... Uh, what is the name of your protagonist? Uh, 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 he was a Stokes. Stokes. The judge Stokes. No, he was a deputy sheriff. Oh, okay. Yeah, who went into the valley against the advice of the, the sheriff. Okay. He was, I think it was like, you know, the, the term is Tantaran. Yeah, yeah. Know? He was going to be tough. He was going to yeah. show the guys in yeah. Honolulu. He would... You know, there's a little precedent. It sounds like those people who are nowadays looking at protesters and saying, why don't they enforce the law? <laughs> you know, and all of that stuff. So yeah. he's, uh, he's one of the, why don't yeah. they enforce the law? And people. he was shot dead. By oh, Kola. my goodness. And okay, I hope that doesn't happen. I, I don't yeah, no, I don't think, no, no. And the, the purpose of this is to tell the story, basically. Yeah, yeah. You know, so people understand that there's a sad history here of people pushing other people whether, you know, they feel like they're backed into a point. Right. And you, yeah. and you so don't the, want the story was that this gentleman went out to get, uh, what is the Hawaiian cowboy's name again? Uh, Kaluai Ko'olau. Yeah, Kaluai Ko'olau. Yeah. And, he, and he, nobody could catch him, right? No. And they sent, us, they, sent, they sent soldiers to try and catch him like that, and they weren't able to. And a couple of soldiers were shot, and, you know, Died and then one person accidentally shot themselves. I guess the whole point, one of the major points is that in the overthrow of the Hawaiian monarchy, um, there have been some arguments in the past about, oh, you know, the, the, the new government was responsible for the overthrow of the monarchy. Well, in this particular instance, the new government 
couldn't even catch one Hawaiian. <laughs> well, he was special, though. He, he was, was. He was special. He was special. Hey, um, yeah. we we got some pictures of the uh, uh, the young actor, your main actor. Right. Uh, and uh, those are pictures. That's him, right? And yeah. Is that an actual picture of that's, he? Uh, that's got uh, Kalawai Kola, his wife P. Lanis, and uh, Kalimanu. And I think that that's his m mother. Okay, yeah. so these are the people that the story was written about. That right. guy that uh, looks yeah, like uh, I should look like. He's the he's the he's the main actor. He's right? the main actor. He acted in the film Kuleana too, more an iconic core. And, and he then, does an uh, excellent you job. You got him there, right. and then you got another picture of him, and he is. That's uh, in Sacramento, um, where more than six hundred people attended that play. Oh, you you did the play on the mainland as well. Yes, in we've Sacramento? been to Los Angeles, Berkeley, and Sacramento's more than six hundred people. Standing ovation. This is a very timely story because it is a story of uh, people standing up for what they believe, for their culture, just like he did. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's, it's tragic, but it's kind of a happy ending in the sense that he was free. He was never, ever, he was, neither he and, nor his son right. were ever yep. caught. They were never caught. And basically, when the military left, that was it. That was the end. That, that, that's what, you know, if they had just left him alone, that, nothing, would, nothing have would have happened. And, and he would have been a cowboy uh, doing this thing. So mm -hmm. we got one last picture for you, which I think is, uh, see that? That's a whole bunch of people from uh, <laughs> Koku, Hawaii. So just to let you know that now, um, folks that, uh, you know, don't be afraid to stand up for what you believe in because someday you will be prominent uh, citizens just like these group uh, of yeah, people. Yeah, you know, prominent peaceful citizens. Peaceful I think, citizens. Yeah, that's one of the things that we did. Uh, I, I think that's a good precedent that we set as far as uh, organizing peaceful demonstrations and trying to reach out to people and, and talk to them. Okay, the legend of Koolau this coming weekend at the Doris Duke Theater. Yes. Right? And I hope that all of you take a few minutes out and see this very good play. It's uh, legendofko'olau.com. Oh, oh, yeah, legendofko'olau.com. Yeah. Yep. Well, Gary, thank you. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> and I, I hope uh, everyone takes, takes the time to go and see, uh, first of all, uh, this great work, but they also this great actor. Oh. And it's a one-man play, right? It's right. A, it's a, it's yeah, really yeah, excellent. Yeah. Thank you all. Sure. Thank you.